On Frieza Planet 79, Alarm's ring as a scientist begins to panic. Alerting the entire compound, he announces that Lord Eyes is about to be born. As several soldiers rush to meet him, a member of Frieza's race is revealed. One of the henchmen offers his congratulation to Eyes on his birth. Confused, the creature asks if Eyes is his name. Nervously, one of the men spout up that his late father Frieza chose the name for him. The same asks if there's anything he needs. Without hesitating, he demands to fight a strong opponent. I want to let loose the power I've preserved over these years of thawing. I can't just sit idling around. Understood. Well then, I'll take you to a planet with strong warriors right away. Oh, and bring me a cold drink too. Yes sir, I'll have one right out. The entire universe was about to face a danger of the likes of which it had never seen before. Up until now, Goku and the others have fought countless mighty opponents and continued to grow and develop in the process. They then defeated their most powerful enemy, Omega Shenron, after a long and grueling battle. Three years have passed since that fight. Pan is now 16 years old and currently attending high school in West City. Flying above the world below, she quickly arrives to her destination. Touching down and rushing to school, she happens across a robbery in progress. Hey, don't come any closer! Do it and I'll kill her! Of course, it's the old, no pun intended, Pilaf gang. Looks like after a lifetime of failures, they've resorted to violent crime. Pan demands they stop this nonsense. If they resist, then she will stop them by force. Everyone in town seems to be familiar with her heroics, except for some reason Pilaf and his cronies. Without hesitating, the teenage warrior methodically takes down each one of them as promised, except Shu, who promptly surrenders. With the bad guys heading to jail, she hurries to class as to not be late. Showing to be an all-around student, one of her classmates can't help but mention her exemplary aptitude, but ruins this compliment by also saying it's a surprise she's not more popular. Of course, bringing up how her grandpa, Mr. Satan, is the strongest man in the world after all. Overhearing the chatter, another student asks if it's true he's decided on a successor, and if that successor truly is Papaya Man. The teacher calls for the students to quiet down as Pan thinks Uba has taken on some pretty tiresome responsibilities. Speaking of which, at the World Martial Arts Championship, Papaya Man, reigning champion, faces off against the fearsome, the meaty, Captain Beef. The round is underway and it quickly becomes rather obvious that there's gonna be no upset in this match. With a single punch, our guy has crowned the winner. With the victory, Mr. Satan takes the stage as the crowd roars in the background. As mentioned with Pan, the world champ announces his retirement to the world. Asking Oob to remove his mask, the new world champ is revealed for the first time. The people of Earth need not worry, however. The champ has drilled everything he knows about fighting into this young man. Mr. Satan thanks the crowd for the opportunity to be their hero one last time. Letting their love flow, the Ocean of fans drowns Hercule in their compliments. A man of few words, Oob simply tells everyone he'll do his best to follow in Mr. Satan's footsteps. On an alien world. Weak! Weak! Far too weak! Eyes grows infuriated, he can't find anybody worthy to test his powers against. That's when a henchman suggests Goku, the Saiyan that defeated Frieza. Interested in fighting the man who killed his own father, he asks where this Goku is located. After a little research, they head for Earth. And at Capsule Core, Vegeta has continued his training, reaching the point he could become Super Saiyan 3 at will. Ah! Feeling slightly accomplished and becoming accustomed to Super Saiyan 3, he believes he needs to grow a tail to go all the way to Super Saiyan 4 after all. No matter how hard he trains, it just isn't happening. Frustrated, he still needs to rely on Bulma's technology in the meantime. But with just the mere thought of Kakarot, he knows he has to get even stronger. In the kitchen area, Bulma and Chi-Chi talk about how all their husbands do is train, and poor Chi-Chi doesn't even know where Goku is at the moment, having flown away with the dragon, of course. Making his way into the house, Vegeta passes his daughter, who isn't shy about announcing his lack of hygiene. A little ways away, Goten seems to be stressing about something, and not a second later, Trunks comes by looking a little more stressed. It appears that Goten has a job at Capsule Corp and is slacking on the job. After getting engaged to a nice young lady named Palace, her father wouldn't approve of their waiting until he had a secure job. Trunks was nice enough to bestow upon him that privilege. Trunks berates him some more before Goten answers the phone, and lo and behold, it's his wife, letting him know she's pregnant. Elated and full of new motivation, he eagerly heads back to work, to the somewhat deflation of Trunks, commenting what a simple creature he is. Gohan tends to his collection of books, then he senses an unfathomable key heading to Earth. Vegeta, the boys, Pan, and Oob sense the same. Eyes is about to make his arrival. Excited in the Sun Goku character, the other Z fighters rush to meet him upon landing. It's almost just the same as when Frieza and his father came to Earth all those years ago. They spot the ship in the air, recognizing as one of Frieza's immediately. Eyes and his men waste no time vacating. The leader tells his subordinates to search the planet, but there are already six high power levels close by. A goon, who is possibly Raspberry, recognizes Vegeta as the traitor to the force. And upon learning of Aiza's intentions, not revenge, but merely a good fight, he is 100% on board, claiming himself to be even stronger than Kakarot and telling the others not to interfere. Powering up into everyone's shock, he goes straight to Super Saiyan 3. Apparently, there hadn't been an opportunity for everybody to see him in this form yet. You ready? Whenever you wish. Ah! <laughs> Big Bang Attack! 
to a universal surprise. Eyes is able to deflect the attack, getting back into a short skirmish before the battle comes to a standstill. The Galactic Warrior couldn't be more happy. This is the best match yet. Vegeta, on the other hand, can't believe the power this guy has. Can he really be related to Frieza? Out of nowhere, Piccolo contacts Gohan from Otherworld, informing him that Frieza has enlightened him to something terrible. In what can only be described as shark jumping and stupid storytelling, it appears that Frieza and his family come from a planet called Winter. Immediately after being born, people there cover themselves in ice and enter a thawing period. The longer the thawing period lasts, the stronger the warrior will be. Frieza's thawing period was five years. Cold, six years. This ice fellow, his was over 50 years long. Well then, how about you entertain me a little more? Frieza relishes in the limelight of his offspring, believing he will finally have his revenge. Piccolo tells them not to delay in fighting him all at once, as he has a very uneasy feeling about this. Gohan agrees and tells Vegeta that they're going to fight too, but Vegeta doesn't want help from slackers like them, so they just need to keep back and watch. Eyes agrees as he's looking forward to seeing how far he can push Vegeta. Don't tell me that was your true power. If so, I'm quite disappointed. But Vegeta tells him to relax. This isn't all of his power. Reluctantly, he opens the capsule containing the Blux Wave device. Tossing it back to Trunks, he asks him to shoot it at him. As Trunks nervously fires the device, Vegeta grows back his tail, transforming into a great ape before then going Super Saiyan 4. Th that's incredible! He turned into a Super Saiyan 4! Thanks for waiting! I'll show you what happens now when I get serious! Alright then. Let's start round two. Vegeta creates some distance and uses a final shine attack. Lord Eyes! He, he can't be this strong. Incredible. Too incredible. Is Lord Eyes okay? This is bad. If we don't treat him right away. <laughs> As the battle damage Space Lord descends from the sky, he says that he didn't think Vegeta would give him this much of a threat. So now, he's going to have to get serious. Vegeta tries to laugh this off and say he's merely bluffing, but then, everybody senses an enormous energy. Ice begins to transform in what appears to be Frieza's second state. All right, are you ready to fight? <clears throat> Gohan knows how bad they just screwed up and thinks they should have just attacked them all together at once. <laughs> ah! <clears throat> <clears throat> Ow! Vegeta, behind you! <clears throat> <clears throat> Solid kick, Eyes launches Vegeta to the ground. Gohan's decided he's had it with watching and tells Oob, Trunks, and Goten to get ready to fight. Trunks hands the Blood Swave device to Pan. The boys transform into Gotenks and Oob vows to show them the fruits of his training. They manage to catch Eyes off guard, but it's no use as he's just too fast. Using his head, Gohan tells Pan to shoot that device at him. But she's concerned that he'll transform into a great ape. But Gohan knows it's all or nothing. He remains confident he'll be able to go Super Saiyan 4 as well. Thinking back to that first fight with Vegeta way back in his childhood. When he transformed, he heard his father's and Krillin's voices. And that somewhat helped him come to his senses. He believes that all Super Saiyan 4 is is transforming into a great ape and doing just that. So when he does become a new Zaru, he wants Pan to call out to him. Pan agrees and Gohan begins to transform. Sure enough, first becoming a new Zaru. However, it's clear he doesn't have any sense of control over this form. Pan calls out to him and Gohan begins to react, transforming back into a humanoid figure, complete with shoes and pants. Sure enough, it's Super Saiyan 4. Grumpy that he was able to transform right away, Gohan calls out to Vegeta for all of them to fight him together this time. Walking over, Vegeta tells him he can't believe they're having this much trouble with Frieza's leftovers. The Saiyan Prince agrees and he tells Gohan to try not to slow him down. Ah, take this! Big Bang attack! Ice can only try to block the blast raining down on him from above. The others join in as Vegeta tells Gohan to do it now. The other Super Saiyan 4 charges a Kamehameha. Connecting, it seems to have been the blast to have maybe done the trick. Back in hell, both Frieza and Piccolo look like this fight is over. Back in the mountains of Earth, Tien and Chaozu become aware they've been left out of something. As Vegeta and Gohan catch their breath, Ice merely walks out of the crater he was just blown up in. Or at least that's how it seemed. Thanking all of the Earthlings, he tells them he's had enough fun, but as a consolation prize, he's going to kill all of them quickly so they don't have to suffer. And after transforming into his true self, they won't even see it coming. In the realm of the Kais, Kibito Kai sees something distressing in his crystal ball and calls over Old Kai, who's busy doing something a little more interesting, telling him that this is serious as terrible things are happening on Earth at this very moment. As Aiz appears in the crystal ball, Kibito Kai asks if there's anything that they can do. Alas, the Old Kai says there is not. 
Feeling useless, he then says that they must revive Goku, but Old Kai replies that reviving him right now is impossible. As much as I want to do something, we've probably got no choice but to leave it all up to Vegeta and Son Gohan. But, but their opponent is unimaginably strong! No matter how good those two may be, well, if they can't overcome a trial of this scale, the Earth may be done for either way. Huh? What exactly does that mean? You'll understand in time. At any rate, all we can do now is sit and watch. At Kame House, Master Roshi is seen getting into his usual uncensored business as Krillin and Android 18 have come to pay a visit. He brings up that enormous key that appeared on Earth and the others that seem to be clashing with it. Roshi tells Krillin to relax. There's nothing anybody in present company can do. If the Earth goes, well, all life will go with it. We just have to rely on Vegeta and Gohan. Krillin can't help but miss his best friend in Earth's greatest savior. <clears throat> Watch very closely. Here's my true form. It can't be. His key just keeps rising and rising. What? What an absurdly large key. It's impossible. How could it be so high? It's all over. We can't be someone like this. Pan, get away. It's already too late. There's no escaping him. He's starting to come into view. King Kai panics and gives his usual King Kai dialogue. But back on Earth, the key irradiating from eyes causes people with weaker wills to pass out. Even Pan struggles to stay on her feet. Oob appears to be the first to fall to Eyes' great power. With no time to mourn for their fallen comrade, Gotenks is next, losing his arm just as Tien did in his fight against Nappa. But before he can be finished off, Gohan interferes. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Even with a full power Kamehameha, Gohan does nothing against his fearsome adversary. <sighs> <sighs> Before, hope seemed slim, but now, even Vegeta thinks they have no chance. In other world, Kabuto Kai still tries to convince Old Kai to revive Goku, but for some reason, he still seems rather apprehensive. Ayes begins to merely toy with Gohan, firing tiny Q blasts for the sole purpose of only maiming him. Infuriated at the sight of seeing her father tortured, Pan rushes the Galactic Warrior. Huh? After seeing how insanely outmatched she is, she listens to her father's advice and begins to run away. But Eyes isn't about to let her do so. Gohan pleads with him not to hurt her as Kabuto Kai continues to shout that they need to do something. But with Gohan out of power, Eyes takes aim into everyone's horror. He kills Pan on the spot. Gohan rushes over, but there's nothing to be done. One by one, everybody feels Pan's key disappear from this earth. <coughs> oh, I'll kill you! While holding his deceased daughter, Gohan's key explodes like never before seen. As the dust clears, it appears that the legend of Super Saiyan 5 has been born. Safely handing Pan off to Gotenks, Gohan returns to face this villain. Looks like you've changed forms again. I wonder, have you gotten more worth my time? How dare you do that to Pan? There's no way you're getting away with this. <laughs> Impossible. This... This can't be! After witnessing Pan's death, Gohan's anger explodes. But will this new transformation be enough to defeat such a strong opponent? On the lookout, Dende can only sit in silence, in complete shock of Gohan's strength. The entire planet is shaking simply because of his key. Mr. Popo tells him that when Gohan loses something important to him, he totally loses his ability to reason. Furthermore, he can sense this incredible intent to kill within his key. Dende believes he'll be able to take on eyes in this form. But without being able to use Earth's Dragon Balls, it means they can't bring Pan back to life, leaving Dende to wonder to Goku what he should do. You. Uh, uh. Incredible! He was still hiding that much power! <laughs> Vegeta looks on in astonishment as Gohan brings Ice to his knee with one punch. Not willing to let there be a lapse in action, Gohan approaches him and the fight continues. Sending Ice flying, Gohan begins to scream as his key bursts from the ground. Far away, buildings begin to crumble as citizens believe this to be an earthquake. In the realm of the Kais, even Kabuto Kai doesn't know what's going on. 
asking Old Kai to decipher the situation. Explaining it simply, he says that Gohan's anger has released his hidden power, and this is known as Super Saiyan 5. Kabito Kai reacts in amazement, saying that this means he must be stronger now. The Elder Kai elaborates further by saying that when Gohan forcefully became a Super Saiyan 4, his potential started to be released. In fact, it looks like he was fully awakened by Pan's death. When asked if this means the Earth will be okay, the Old Kai says that for now, it looks to be the Earth is out of danger. As debris settles and ice jumps into the air, it appears the struggle is finally getting to him mentally. It's impossible for such a guy to exist. All of my strength is useless against him. I... I can't forgive that. I definitely can't forgive that. I'll settle this now, with my full power. With that, Ice vows to blow up the planet. Powering up, he appears to be harvesting all of his key to the center of his body before raising it above his head. I'll never forgive a monster like you. Pan, you killed her like a mere worm. You're nothing. That's when Ice unleashes his key on the planet. The others brace for impact as Gohan charges the Kamehameha. Firing it into the air, the energy alone from the impact blows everybody else back. What? The once overconfident warrior can only sit back as the key overtakes him. This... this is... impossible! And just as quickly as he came into existence, Ice leaves the realm of the living, having disintegrated his opponent. Gohan transforms back to normal before falling to his knees to mourn his lost daughter. The others appear unsure of what's even going on anymore. In hell, Frieza can't believe they lost to a Saiyan again! Piccolo thinks to himself how well Gohan did, but laments his own lack of strength. Approaching, Trunks tells Gohan for the time being that they need to get their wounds healed at Kami's place, before also telling Goten to take Oob with him. Heading off, King Kai thinks to himself that for now, the situation seems to have been resolved. However, things could become troublesome again very soon. At the lookout, Dende's able to revive Oob from his injuries. Are you okay, Oob? Everyone! I'm fine! Where's eyes? Trunks tells him that Gohan defeated him, who can be seen zoning out completely disconnected from the real world. Shocked, he asks him how in the world he managed to defeat such a strong opponent. Sparing Gohan from having to explain, Trunks tells Oob what happened. Dende, are you sure we really can't use the Dragon Balls? The Dragon Balls? Well, there is a way. However, right now, the Dragon Balls are... Hey! Son Gohan! This voice... Is it the old Kaioshin-sama? Yes, I know everything about your current situation, and I understand your feelings very well too. But, for now, I have to tell you something about the Dragon Balls. Cutting to the chase, he tells Gohan they cannot use the Dragon Balls at the moment. But that leads Gohan to ask if that means they can use them at a later time. Don't be so hasty, let me explain in order. With everybody's attention, the old Kai begins to say at the beginning, the story started three years ago. When everybody fought against Omega Shenron, Goku died. This comes as a huge shock to everyone. The energy! I need everyone's energy! I'm not dead yet! Son Goku, I will lend you my strength, but there is a condition for this. A condition? Shenron goes on to explain that the current situation is the reality that the Z Fighters have created, and that's why it must be solved by their own hand. In other words, it means Goku will have to take responsibility in place of the Earth. And of course, knowing Goku, he'll do whatever he can. That's when Shenron says Goku will need to give him his body. Is that understood? Goku once again happily agrees. Making it so, that's when Goku arises with the spirit bomb. You've lost! Y you are still alive? <laughs> I'm not dead yet! Not until I beat you! And by using Shenron's strength, Goku successfully defeated Omega Shenron. But after doing so, Goku had to fulfill his side of the agreement. The negative energy was sealed back inside the Dragon Balls using Goku's positive energy. In short, in order to prevent the negative energy from being released again, Goku is now fighting alone. So, my dad gave his body for our sake? If we restore the Dragon Balls now, an evil dragon way stronger than Omega Shenron will be released. And for now, you guys don't have the strength to beat that evil dragon. Ugh. But couldn't Son Gohan beat it now? As a Super Saiyan 5 probably could beat anyone, I'm afraid Gohan can't use that power anymore. What? Why is that? Illustrating the point, Old Kai says that at the time of the transformation, it was a miracle Gohan transformed in the first place. It just happened to be a perfect cocktail of willingness to kill, grudge, and excitement. Now that Eyes is dead, he can't remember that state of tension. So, that's how it is. However, I have a little idea. Gohan, Vegeta, I will train you both and turn you into Super Saiyan 5. 
Trunks asks if he can even do that, and Old Kai says that he's not entirely sure, but he'll do whatever he can to help. Vegeta chimes in by saying if the training is a success, they'll break the seal of the Dragon Balls. Uh, I just thought of something. Couldn't we just use Namek's Dragon Balls to revive Pan? Hmm, impossible. Namek's Paranga is much stronger than Earth Shenron. That means the negative energy will also be much stronger. And there is little doubt if we use them again, an evil dragon will be released. The old Kai also reveals that he's reluctant in restoring Earth's Dragon Balls, but with the situation being what it is, it's not like he can stop them from doing it. Also, he doesn't want to put such a burden on Goku's shoulders alone. This is a trial for all of the Earthlings! This time, you'll have to surpass your own limits! Y yes! Vegeta can't help but find himself frustrated thinking that Goku always fixes things himself. Yelling at Old Kai to hurry up and start training them already, Gohan asks if it's okay if he makes a report of the situation to everyone. But ever the eager warrior, Vegeta says just let Trunks and the others spread the word. That's when Kibito Kai suggests that Vegeta train alone at first. Do whatever you please! Thank you. Vegeta bids his son goodbye as Kibito Kai comes to teleport him away. The others head off the lookout. Finding ourselves back at Gohan's house, he delivers the terrible news to his wife. At Capsule Core, Trunks has Bulma put Pan in a preservation chamber, and Goten tells Chi Chi what's happened as well. The following day, Gohan and the others begin their training in order to restore the Dragon Balls. What kind of training awaits them in Otherworld? And will Goku and Pan really be able to be brought back to life? Meanwhile, in the Demon Realm, a menacing figure stands on a rock formation. Shioko! What is it, Marble? I'm a little busy now. An imp-like character can be seen playing a video game. It's so boring here. I really am busy. Ah, I died! Shioko, what do you want? I thought I'd leave and see the outside world. What? The outside world? Why? What's suddenly come over you? I've grown bored of this world's landscape. I think I want to look for more sounds. Are you serious about this? Yes. Mm. Shioko, won't you go with me? On the lookout yet again, Goten, Ub, and Trunks gather to train just like Gohan and Vegeta. Well, I understand, but what should we do? For the time being, Goten and I will recover our strength. Ub can train on his own. To rest? Is that really okay? The truth is, I have a secret plan. Our goal is to complete it. A secret plan? <laughs> I'll tell you later. Okay, let's start. With that, Trunks, Goten, and Ub begin their training. So, Gohan decided to come too. Let's begin right away then. Gohan and Vegeta both look stoic as the old Kai says that they need to regrow their tails. A tail? To make full use of a Saiyan's hidden strength, a tail is mandatory. And just like in GT, our shapeshifter friend transforms into a pair of pliers. Old Kai then explains what's about to happen. Are you serious, Kaioshin-sama? I'm dead serious. In the past, Goku grew his tail back this way too. This statement brings a small revelation to Vegeta in acceptance to Gohan. Old Kai tells him to get ready and calls Kibito Kai to help. Strapping Gohan to a rock, the two of them pull with all their might to try to unveil his tail. Two days have passed since the Z Fighters started training. On Earth, a new opponent has arrived, entering from what appears to be a rip in space-time. The two demons from earlier gaze out upon Earth, commenting what a noisy place it is. Listening to the sounds of the city, Marble says this is the first time he's ever heard sounds like this. Out of nowhere, Marble creates what appears to be a rock-like figure out of thin air and blows up the nearest city. As the smoke clears, only a giant crater remains. Shioko comments on Marble's power. This is truly wonderful! It's the best of the realms! Shioko, let's make this place our new home! Anywhere is fine, I don't care. Let's go look for even better sounds. Gohan, Goten, Trunks, Vegeta, and Ub all sense the destruction. What the hell is this key? What on earth is going on? I don't know, but something's attacking the planet. What an incredible key. Goten, Ub, let's go. Goten thinks to himself that the bad guys just come one after another to this planet. The three of them take off to try to figure out what's going on. Looking in, Kibito Kai knows exactly who this man is. The king of the Makai, Marble. When asked to elaborate, Kibito Kai goes on to say that after Deborah's death, he's the demon that took rule. From what he understands, Marvel possesses strength many steps above Deborah's. Although, this attack on Earth seems really out of character, as he's known to be a rather quiet individual. Gohan appears really concerned that this adversary is more powerful than Deborah. 
which on the surface doesn't make a lot of sense considering how much more powerful everybody is. But if he and Vegeta aren't there, and this marble is even more powerful than Majin Buu, this could spell quite a bit of trouble for Goten, Trunks, and Ooh. Kabutokai feels the same as he recommends they all get back to Earth now. Vegeta sits quietly before breaking his silence. Wait, Gohan! We don't have to go against opponents of that level! The others are more than enough! Going on to make a very valid point. If they keep rushing to Earth to bail him out anytime there's trouble, how are the others going to improve? This is training for them as well. We will stay here until we finish what we came for. Elder Kai takes Vegeta's side on this. Gohan thinks about it for just a moment before agreeing as well. On a mountain peak, Shoko and Marvel are seen listening to the sounds below. Hmm, what a fine landscape. I don't understand your thinking, as usual. Well, I'll let you hear it. Marvel lifts his hands to presumably destroy another city when Trunks comes barreling down, sending him to the ground. Catching his balance, he picks himself up to see Trunks, Oob, and Goten. Trunks says that he doesn't know or care who he is, but he won't forgive anybody who damages his planet. Looks like some annoying guys have come to join us. I just came here to find some good sounds. I'm not interested in your little monologue. If you interfere, you will have to fight me. Without skipping a beat, all three of the boys power up. It's been a while since the last time I fought. Two demons have suddenly appeared on the Earth. Marble and Shioko. What is their true strength? Will Trunks, Goten and Ub be enough to protect the Earth? Trunks reminds the others not to do anything too rash, as they still can't use the Dragon Balls. As things briefly settle down, the boys manage to separate their opponents. Azub goes to fight Shioko one-on-one. -on -one. Trunks and Goten look to take on Marble, who admits the two of them are much more powerful than he initially believed. Simultaneously, they sense the brooding key within the demon, claiming it to be unlike anything they've ever felt before. Goten and Trunks comment on the immense speed of their opponent, and Marble laughs in triumph, claiming he has caught them. Confused, Trunks asks, caught us? What do you mean? Then realizes he's been completely immobilized. Smugly, Marvel asks if they really think they'll be able to withstand this technique. With the demon setting off the attack, Gohan shouts for Goten and Trunks while looking on from Otherworld. Vegeta, on the other hand, is just frustrated by the boy's incompetence. Turning, Gohan asks him what they should do, but remaining stagnant in his beliefs, Vegeta says there is nothing for them to do. This will be good for them, but Gohan just continues to worry about their well-being. Vegeta continues, It's fine! They haven't even started taking the fight seriously yet! <laughs> Meanwhile, Oob seems to be faring well against Shioko, but the demon rests assured knowing he has an ace in the hole. Rushing forward, Shioko throws out his hand, stopping Oob in his tracks, as he appears to fall into some sort of trance. Realizing something has changed, Oob can't quite place it. Then hearing from behind, Hey, Oob! It's been a while! He looks to see Goku. Rightfully confused, Oob asks what he's doing here. Isn't he supposed to be sealed within the Dragon Balls? Goku explains that in the three years that have passed, the evil energy has been purged, therefore, he himself has been released. Just happy to see his mentor, Oob doesn't think reasonably about the situation. When Goku says, More importantly, you want to spar like the good old days? Wanting to see how strong his student has gotten. Which, of course, Oob is more than happy to do a little training. Saying he's doing well, Goku wants to get serious now. Powering up and going into a Super Saiyan 4 form, charging a Kamehameha, Oob kind of begins to panic. Oob is ultimately taken down by the blast. As Goku offers his hand to help him up, Oob thanks him. And he says, just as I thought, I'm still no match for the legendary Goku. But Goku says Oob did great. In fact, he was really surprised, asking if he'd like to go another round, which Oob happily accepts. But back in reality, Oob is hypnotized and repeatedly saying, I can't win against Goku. I can't win against Goku. As the demon laughs to himself that he's totally caught up in his technique. Just a little more, and... As Oob takes a beating, 
He merely stands back up each time, continuing to repeat to himself, I can't win against Goku. Even worse, the longer this attack goes on, the more energy Shioko collects from his opponent. And it's all triggered by Oob's lack of belief that he can actually defeat the opponent in front of him. In this case, Goku. As the demon goes in for the kill, Oob powers up massively, catching him off guard. In terror, the demon realizes that he's getting stronger when he should be getting weaker. At this rate, it'll be dangerous to maintain his trance technique, so he decides it's best to just end it now. Just as Oob is about to go berserk, Shioko tells him to quiet down which he does, but quickly comes to, shouting, YOU, remembering his opponent, growing very concerned. Shioko thinks to himself that he's never fought a guy like this before, just as Oob promises to end this fight now. Trying to puff out his chest, the demon tells him not to get carried away. He'll soon understand how menacing he really is. As Oob gets ready to strike, the menacing demon runs away. As the earthling gives chase, Shioko decides his only resolve is to fuse with Marble. Right now, it may be his only hope. Marble himself is caught enjoying the sound of an explosion. When Trunks and Goten rise from the rubble to break out the fusion dance, clearly shocked at what he's seen, Gotenks tells him that the real fight starts now. But the demon remains undeterred, just saying how surprised he is to see anybody on this planet know how to fuse, but not in the mood to talk. Our fused hero tells him he doesn't have a lot of time, so he wants to finish this quickly. Up for the challenge, Marble says he's ready whenever. Catching the demon in his galactic donut attack, Gotenks compresses his foe into what resembles a volleyball, shouting, ULTRA SUPER VOLLEYBALL ACTION! Tossing him in the air and going in for a spike. Though Gotenks is pleased with the results, Marble comes rushing out of the crater angry. Gotenks is surprised that he's even alive. Maybe so, but it looks like it definitely took its toll on him. But staying true to his word, he goes in for another attack trying to end this as quick as he can. It's clear that Marvel had no idea the boys could manage this much power. But lucky for him, he still has a secret weapon of his own. Just as Shioko comes rushing in shouting for Marble, it catches the attention of the both of them. Meeting up with Gotenks, Oob apologizes for not being able to finish his opponent. Shioko congratulates the Earthlings on a well-fought fight. But now, they can't win. Oob simply calls them sore losers. But that's when, in a similar stance to the Namekians, they each place their hands upon each other as a light fills the area. Emerging from the light is a combination of the two demons. Gotenks and Oob can only look on in shock as they realize they too have fused. Claiming this as their true form, the fused demon apologizes to keep them waiting. Oob can't believe the key he's feeling. That's when the demon claims that he will now give a demonstration of the difference in strength between the three of them. As Gotenks is implanted into the dirt, Oob shouts out for his comrade as the demon only laughs in accomplishment. The Earthling can only continue to marvel at the opponent's strength and speed. In Otherworld, Gohan continues to lose his composure, as even Vegeta seems greatly bothered by the situation. Angrily agreeing to head back to Earth, he tells Kibito Kai to come with him, who surprisingly tells Vegeta to wait, as something is going on with Gotenks. As the aforementioned gathers himself, the fused demon patiently waits before calmly claiming that Gotenks has made a complete fool of him up until now. But since he was much stronger than expected, it was time to go all out. But now he's bored, so he's decided to put an end to this struggle. Oob looks on helplessly as Gotenks spits out a little bit of blood and cracks his neck. This makes... Mar Yoko? Confused at how casual he's acting. At last, Gotenks states, In that case, I too will fight seriously! Then telling himself he wanted to use this against the evil dragons, but it looks like he'll have to use it now instead. Oob instantly knows what he's up to. Pulling out a capsule, he reveals the Blux Wave amplifier. Tossing it to Oob, he tells him to use it on him now! Confirming with Vegeta what the device is, Vegeta explains that they plan to go Super Saiyan 4, but if they fail, it's gonna be a giant mess. Using the amplifier, Gotenks begins to transform into an Azaru. Pulling it off, we have Super Saiyan 4 Gotenks. Calling it his final trump card, Gotenks gets ready for the final round. As the battle between fused warriors begins, Mar- We're- We're just gonna call him Marble. I don't know. Marble says Gotenks may look different, but his power still doesn't match his own. Gotenks only reiterates that he doesn't have time to talk. Jumping back to Gohan, he can only marvel at the kind of training they must have been through the past couple days. And merely two days ago, we're taken to the room of spirit and time where Goten and Trunks are training furiously. 
giving us a little more info. Trunk says that it's been a month since they've entered this place, and they both finally managed to unlock Super Saiyan 2, before also saying that he believes it's time to go ahead with their secret plan. Goten says, Oh yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember you saying something about that. Taking out a capsule, Trunks unveils the Blux amplifier. Goten instantly knows the potential the device carries. With this, Trunks' plan is revealed to become Super Saiyan 4. Calling for Oob to come help him with their training, he asks him to use the Blux waves to turn them both into Azarus. Then, asks Oob to fight them both until they regain their minds. Being the prodigy that he is, he should be able to handle it. Oob agrees, saying he'll give it his all. Instead of using the amplifier on each of them individually, Trunks calls on Goten to fuse. As soon as the fusion is complete, Goten tells Oob to deploy the waves. Shuddering at the immense key of the Great Ape, Oob tells himself that if he can't handle this, then there's no way he can stand up to the evil dragons. Catching a blow to the face, the hit seems to do a little bit of damage, but remaining optimistic, Oob shouts that this is the feeling he's been waiting for. As it seems the situation has reached its conclusion. The gang sits around trying to catch their breath. Trunks asks Goten if he retained any sense of consciousness. Goten tells him, yeah, somehow, but he couldn't move his body. But if the both of them aren't fully conscious, they won't be able to go Super Saiyan 4. Thinking, Trunks says, ah, I know suggesting a call like the one during the fight with Ives. Pan kept calling out for Gohan. Because they have mixed earthling blood, the likelihood for them to retain their senses is much higher than Goku or Vegeta's. So next time, the plan is to have Oob call out to them. Maybe that way, they'll return to their normal mind. Hopeful, Oob says he's willing to give it a shot. So the training is soon resumed with trial and error. And after the third day, they finally succeeded in becoming Super Saiyan 4. Soaking it all in, Oob thinks to himself, this is a result of our training. They finally mastered the transformation. Back in present time, Gotenks asks his foe, Well, are you ready? Haha, <laughs> you did it! You really did it, Gotenks! In the world of the Kais, the others celebrate this victory as well. But as the smoke settles, this battle is not yet won. Wha what's with this guy? Uh, impossible! And at the worst possible moment, the fusion wears off. Naturally, Kibito Kai expresses great concern at this. Knowing it's going to be a while before they can fuse again, Trunks tries to think of a plan. Though beaten and weary, Marble tells the boys, Now, prepare yourselves! As Goten just wonders how he can still be alive. That's when Oob decides he's done enough watching, claiming the demon has taken on too much damage to defeat him. Ugh, don't poke fun at me, runt. Oob! As Oob goes to charge a Kamehameha, it appears he may want to end this with one attack. Ugh, as I thought, your strength has dropped quite a lot. However, I'm not gonna hesitate! I'll protect the Earth! Giving it his all, Oob's Kamehameha overtakes Marble, and it appears the attack has left no trace of the demon. The gang begins to celebrate once more. Even the Kais appear to believe the battle is won. Gohan says aloud, You did very well, Oob, Trunks, and Goten. But as a man of business, Vegeta just wants to continue the training. And back on Earth, like father like son, Trunks says the same thing. For the first time, Earth was saved by Trunks, Oob, and Goten. However, the Z Fighters didn't know that the real test was yet to come. Back on the lookout, Trunks reasons with Goten that they must be out of shape. That's why their bodies weren't able to sustain the fusion for very long. And here on out, he wants to put their focus on just recovering their basic strength. Oob is seen meditating, then thinking to himself, during that battle, a mysterious power came out. I wonder what it was. But somehow, it felt very nostalgic. There must be some unknown power I've yet to realize. If only I can draw it out by training more and more. And on the other end, it looks like Vegeta and Gohan both have grown their tails back. The old guy says, that might have taken a while, but it's time to begin training at once. Next, you must freely be able to become Super Saiyan 4. While this is a roadblock for Gohan, Vegeta says that'll be no problem, as he instantly transforms. He comments that as long as he has a tail, he knows the trick to the transformation. While he is proud of Vegeta, he says, regardless, I'd like to explain to you the details of the training. Gohan's only goal is to master going Super Saiyan 4. But Vegeta, on the other hand, he will delve into emotional control training, his worst nightmare. 
Simple enough, Old Kai plans to put Vegeta under a spell. If he can disable it on his own, he passes the training. In a possible case of foreshadowing, he says that while this spell is active, he will be unable to cast any other spell. He then explains that he believes overwhelming rage and murderous intent will be necessary triggers to transform into Super Saiyan 5. That's why if you're able to control your emotions, you should be able to control the transformation. Then giving Vegeta one last warning that the spell he's about to cast may kill him. But I think we all know how the Prince of All Saiyans feels about that. Then giving Vegeta one more one last warning, saying that even if he is able to dispel it, there's no guarantee it'll help him transform into a Super Saiyan 5. Causing Gohan to ask, uh, well then, isn't all of this pointless? But old Kai argues no. According to his calculations, he believes that the likelihood that he'll be able to transform is quite high. But at the same time, nothing is guaranteed. But you're gonna have to trust an old fella every once in a while. If Vegeta is firmly able to maintain consciousness, he should be able to snap out of it. Old Kai says all he has to do is believe in the miracle that is Gohan and Vegeta. Finally deciding that's enough talking, he then says let's get down to it. As the wave makes contact, Vegeta reacts very similar to when he is being possessed by Bobbity, but then he starts laughing hysterically, leaving Gohan confused but Kibito Kai thinks he knows what's going on. As Vegeta struggles to regain control over himself, he then falls into a spout of anger. When Kibito Kai says, oh, just as I suspected, he had heard from the great Kaioshin from ages ago that they possess various different types of abilities. Usually these abilities were combat or key based, but it was said that one Kaioshin from long ago could manipulate the emotions of living things. While he doesn't know the name of the spell, there is also one that could numb emotions, somebody's joys, anger, sadness, and confuse them with illusions. Furthering that that spell is very dangerous. It has the potential to cause brain damage to the target or even the host. Asking why Old Kai would use it if it's that dangerous, Kibito Kai says he thinks he understands his ancestors' thinking. He thinks that by having Vegeta dispel the spell with his own power, he'll be able to draw out his own emotion beyond the limit. With that, Gohan finally understands the meaning behind emotional control training, something that for somebody so smart seems like it would be common sense. But to detract from Vegeta, Gohan says he can't sit idly by and must begin his training as well. So Gohan and Vegeta's training to exceed their limits continued. Meanwhile, an abnormal change was happening to Goku's body that Gohan and the others were still unaware of. On the lookout yet again, the Dragon Balls appear to have cracked. As Dende says, this key, it can't be. Rushing inside and down the hall, the Dragon Balls are now glowing. This can't be. How could this happen? That's when Popo turns the corner to ask what's going on. But all Dende can say is, Popo, hurry up and contact Gohan and the others. Something terrible has happened. Back in the world of the Kais, Vegeta continues his training. Kibito Kai says that this is incredible. Vegeta's mental strength must be insane to be able to keep this up for an entire day. Gohan's doing good as well. And of course, during this emotional training for Vegeta, the only one he can think about is Kakarot, and how he's managed to outdo him ever since they met. He then decides he's finished being shown up. As everything comes to a settle, it appears he's unlocked the transformation. Even from Earth, the boys can feel his immense strength, with Trunks being the first to say that he believes it's his dad. Oob comments that it feels like he's standing right next to him. As Goten can pretty much only gawk, Trunks continues, Father, it appears your training was successful. Vegeta looks like he's still trying to control the form. As Gohan adds, wow, what furious key. Kibito Kai congratulates the Saiyan, and Old Kai says that it looks like things went well. Just then, Vegeta falls out of the form. Gohan tells him that that was amazing. He can't believe he was able to transform in such a brief period of time. But Vegeta, ever the cocky warrior, says that of course, it was nothing, then inquires Gohan about his progress. And unfortunately, uh, nothing yet. Calling him pathetic, he tells him to recall the moment where he transformed during the battle with eyes. Imagine drawing the key from his tail, then if he's able to remain fully aware, he should be able to transform. Admitting he never even thought about the tail thing, he'll give it a try. Just then, Old Kai gets a call from Dende. Asking what's up, Dende says something terrible has happened. It appears this call's on speaker because Gohan can hear too. The Guardian of Earth then says that it looks like Goku's vitality has reached its limit. Both Old Kai and Vegeta demand he explain, saying that these past three years, Goku has been holding back all the negative energy from overflowing by continuously releasing his own positive energy. However, it seems Goku's vitality didn't last as long as expected because the evil energy is more powerful than thought. By his own estimate, Dende thinks Goku will only last another three days. By then, Goku will be completely overtaken by the evil energy, and the seal on the evil dragon will likely be undone. Gohan says that that means they only have a day or so left to undo the seal, or his father's life will be in danger. Dende confirms this, saying that if they don't hurry and undo the seal, Goku's life will be in jeopardy. As Old Kai just says aloud, it can't be helped. 
Then following that up with... That's right, Gohan! You must master transforming into a Super Saiyan 5 within the remaining day! But it's still important they take things one step at a time, saying that he must first go Super Saiyan 4. In the meantime, he's gonna need a quick rest. So Kabitokai lends him some of his power. Falling back into his mind, Gohan imagines gathering key from his tail and maintaining full awareness. As he begins to scream and power up, it appears this was the missing piece from his training. Since they don't have a moment to spare, Old Kai says let's start the spell immediately. Yes, sir! Hitting Gohan with the wave, he goes through the same spells as Vegeta on Earth. Trunks shouts to Goten that they only have one day left until the evil dragon is born, so they need to give it all they've got. As Dende just pleads for Goku to hang in there a little bit longer. As time goes by in the world of the Kais, Gohan remains under the spell for almost an entire day. Given his own experience, Vegeta says with the powerful sentiment he has, Gohan should be able to transform soon. Thinking back to Pan's death, Gohan apologizes to his daughter. It's all because of his own weakness, but he vows to bring her back. Reaching his breaking point, he too is able to achieve Super Saiyan 5. Not long later, both he and Vegeta would gather on the lookout with the others. As Dende brings forth the Dragon Balls, it appears they're finally ready to summon the evil dragon. So Gohan calls out Shenron and asks that he grant his wish. But of course, an ominous smoke appears instead. At last, the seal on the Dragon Balls has been undone. Will Gohan and the others be able to triumph over the evil dragon now that its power has increased even more? Once more, the gang goes to call forth the dragon, knowing it'll unleash the negative energy. Gohan and the others ended up having to undo the seal on the Dragon Balls to revive Goku and Pan. Several hours earlier, Old Kai tells Gohan and Vegeta, Before we summon the evil dragons, I'll tell you the strategy we'll be using in the next battle. Strategy? The earth has already been rattled during these battles with eyes and marble. We mustn't place any further burden on the earth. The fight against the evil dragons is predicted to be even more extreme. Continuing, Old Kai says they need to take the battle off the planet. Seeing the logic behind this, Gohan still can't help but ask, well how are we going to do that? Butting in, Kabuto Kai says he'll take them there with instantaneous movement, which causes Gohan to ask if he'll really be able to do that all by himself. But he reassures the half Saiyan, yes, somehow. I'll determine the order and decide each respective movement from here on, elaborating more. I'll be relying on the dragon radar. As soon as I find an evil dragon, I'll transport it to one of the planets where each of you will be located. Basically, you're all going to be fighting them one-on-one, -on -one, then asking the question, which planets will we use? Turning out to be a rhetorical question, he announces, the Dark Demon Realm, Planet Zuni, Planet Kachinko, Planet Mujin, and here, the World of the Kais. Explaining that he picked these five places because they're each more durable than Earth, Gohan interjects, five places? Aren't there supposed to be seven evil dragons altogether? What are we going to do about the remaining two? According to Old Kai, a simple question with a simple solution. Gohan and Vegeta are each going to have to fight two at once. Then Kabito Kai adds, After recovering each Dragon Ball, you'll move on to aid the others. With little choice, Gohan rolls with it. Continuing yet again, Kabito Kai furthers, When the evil dragons revive, they'll probably scatter around the Earth. There may be a slight miscalculation when I transport the evil dragons to the planets where everyone will be so please keep that in mind. With the game plan set, they get ready to head out. And so, the seal on the Dragon Balls was undone. While menacingly towering over the Z Fighters, he spits something out. Hitting the ground, it's Goku! Picking up his father, albeit the childhood version, Gohan says, Thank goodness, he's alive! You were such a thorn in our side, Goku. At long last, we have been released. And as for the rest of you vermin, this time it won't go like it did last. We'll show you hell. Realize the terror of our powered up states. Now, we'll go wild as much as we please. And with that warning, the dragon leaves to split up into individual beings. Everybody gathering around Goku. Gohan says he's breathing, and he senses he's barely clinging to life. Kibito Kai says this comes as no surprise. After all, he's been continually showered in negative energy this entire time, and it's been three years. For the time being, they're just going to let Goku rest in a safe place, so Kaioshin urges everybody else to just follow the plan for now. As Kabuto Kai teleports everybody to their respective planet, he just encourages them to do their best. Grabbing Giru, he goes to look for the Dragon Balls. The closest one is just to the east of here, closing in on a nearby city. Two regular people can be seen saying, What is that? It's disgusting! As one of the Shadow Dragons can be seen terrorizing the town. But Kabuto Kai is able to sneak up from behind and teleport into a distant world. As the Kaioshin moves out, the Shadow Dragon just says to himself, What is this place? My body feels oddly heavy. From behind, Goten says, So, you're my opponent. Giving him a good stare. Who are you? Five stars. Are you Wu Xinglong? We're here to defeat you. We're not going to let you guys have your way. 
damning Goten for interfering. The Shadow Dragon says he really wanted to make the humans suffer. That's too bad. By the way, which negative energy were you born from? Smirking. The villain says he was born when the wish to resurrect the people that were killed by the android cell was granted. Android? I see. I heard my father and the others fought the androids long ago. <laughs> Are you surprised? Eh, that's enough chit chat. Shall we get on with it? In the world of the Kais, Old Kai says aloud, It seems it has finally begun. Hoping it all goes well, but also saying Goku did good for himself up until this point. For now, he only needs to rest. This time, it's Gohan and the others that are going under a trial. And when everyone overcomes this trial, true peace will arrive for the first time. There's nothing more they can do but pray. Going into his fighting stance, Wu Zing Long says he's gonna kill Goten in no time. That guy was all talk! Uh. Appearing behind him, Goten says, Well, that was a close call. If I had been just a bit slower firing off that energy wave, it would have been a direct hit. His opponent replies saying he's shocked how Goten could counter his crimson cannon in an instant and go around behind him, apologizing for underestimating the warrior. While this is happening, Goten thinks to himself that training in the room of spirit and time was the right choice. Coincidentally, the gravity was about 10 times higher, just like this planet. Thanks to that, this new world feels completely natural to him. On the other hand, the Shadow Dragon doesn't look like he's adjusted as well. But then, the dragon says that was a good warm-up and wants to get serious. Much to Goten's surprise. But after he powers up, Goten says, very well, I'll get serious too. All right, shall we continue? Hmm, <laughs> amusing. Meanwhile, Vegeta appears to be waiting out his adversary. It doesn't take long, as a fish monster comes up from behind, but he doesn't appear to be sporting a Dragon Ball. What is the smell? You smell like a human. <laughs> it's been a while since I devoured a human. What luck! But Vegeta merely tells him to get lost and he'll spare his life. Now angry, asking what did you say? Don't get the wrong idea, maggot. You're the one who's going to be begging for your life. Obviously, the creature never stood a chance. Vegeta just thinks to himself, he's gonna regret it when he wakes up in hell, but how boring. As Goten powers up, he seems to be getting an advantage over the Shadow Dragon. As both fighters catch their breath, Goten thinks to himself, As expected, he's a pretty formidable opponent. Can't believe how much trouble I'm having, but I can't falter here and drag the others down. Without realizing it, the dragon is thinking to himself, What is this place? My body won't move as intended. The Dragon Balls have been a great help to us many times until now, but just this once, we have to make do with our own power. There's someone we want to save. There's someone we have to save. So, I will, I will defeat, defeat you. you! Hmm, go for it. Saying this is for Pan, for his family, and to protect the Earth. He calls for his father Goku to lend him his strength. I'll wager everything on this fist. Dragon, Dragon fist. fist! Explosion! <laughs> Barreling through the Shadow Dragon, victory is assured for Goten. Uh, oh! How absurd! Weary, Goten thanks his father and says training by following his example was well worth the while. Spotting the five-star ball on the ground, Goten picks it up. They're well on their way to collecting all seven. Back on Earth, Kabuto Kai looks for the next ball. Finding it to the west, he takes off. Thinking out for Goku to just watch. They'll surely protect the Earth, he just needs to wait a little bit longer. Since the previous Evil Dragon's negative energy was being directed towards Earth, Disasters have been occurring all over the planet, 
But this time, the negative energy is being directed towards Son Goku, so he isn't likely to wake up until the Dragon Balls have been purified. Goku's vitality is already nearing the limit. We must purify the negative energy as soon as possible, or Goku will be in danger. In the world of the Kais, Trunks is seen concentrating on something, then quickly figuring out Goten has won his match. All right, we're up next. As it seems, he spotted his foe. Gohan and the others safely recovered the first Dragon Ball, but will they really be able to recover them all? Gohan and the gang search for the next Dragon Ball after recovering the first. Spotting the town below, Kaioshin looks on at the immense destruction, knowing he better hurry or the Earth could be doomed. <laughs> Go on, run! I'll blast you with my ultimate attack! Tormenting humans feels the best! Die! But before he can launch his attack, Kaioshin transports him to the world of the Kais. What happened? Spotting Trunks and asking who he is, Trunks tells him his name before saying this is where you die. Laughing, the dragon tells him to know his place and to speak to the magnificent Air Zing Long with respect. Trunks replies by telling him he will pay for the damage he did to the Earth. Hmm, just hurry up so I can go torture the Earthlings some more. I won't let you! After powering up, Trunks says he happens to be in a hurry himself, so bring it on! Then I'll kill you soon enough! I won't be fooled by your deceptive appearance! Meanwhile, Oob seems to be having his own trouble with his own shadow dragon. This more derfy dragon asks, wasn't I just in a different place a moment ago? Why am I here? Oob comments, you're huge. Hmm? Who are you? You just noticed me? Just now? I bear you no grudge, but I'm gonna defeat you to protect the earth. Uh, defeat me? Why? What's with this guy? He's messing up my rhythm. Listen up. We're putting our lives at stake to wage battle for the Dragon Balls, right? No, I'm not interested. Anyway, could you put me back where I was? Huh, well, if you hand over the Dragon Ball quietly, we'll put you back. That I don't like. <sighs> it seems talking to you was a waste. I'm sorry, but I don't have time to bother with you. Let's get this over quickly. In spite of all that big talk, you're barely putting up a fight! Hmm? Although to the dragon himself, it seemed the fight was over. But in reality, he has yet to even phase Trunks. The dragon tells him, I'm amazed to see you standing after taking an attack like that. Trunks replies, Me too! I totally let my guard down. Thinking to himself, Trunks can't believe this guy's speed. This isn't gonna be as easy as he thought. The dragon then taunts him, trying to restart the fight. Even when he gives it all, the dragon's able to fend off Trunks, who can't believe he just shrugged off his best attack. Then the dragon asks if he's done already. <sighs> he's so much stronger than I imagined. How could there be such a difference in power? Fine. If you won't come to me, then I'll just come to you. Elsewhere, Old Kai looks on towards the battle. Huh. It seems he's powered up quite a bit after all. Hmm. Hang in there, Trunks. The future of Earth and the future of the entire universe rests on your shoulders. You're already worn out, ain't you? I guess it's about time we wrap this up. <sighs> huh? What's wrong? Have you been scared out of your wits or something? If I could have prevented it, I didn't want to have to use this transformation. What are you talking about? But it seems, I have no choice! <laughs> what a stupid bluff. I just want to ask you one thing before I show you how serious I am. When the hell were you born from negative energy? <laughs> I was born from a negative energy when the wish of those known as Pilaf, Shu, and Mai make us just a bit younger was granted. Pilaf, Shu, and Mai? Mai. 
I think I've heard that name somewhere before. Well, whatever, come on! Let's get this started again! <laughs> Go for it! Powering up, giving it everything he has! We're then taken to the planet Vegeta's currently residing. But even with being so far away, he can still sense his son's key. Of course, taking great pride in it. Alas, that shadow dragon seems to be a lot stronger than they expected. Even Gohan can sense Trunks' power rising. Through all of his training, Trunks has unlocked Super Saiyan 3. Ugh. Sorry for taking so much time. This is my true power. Huh. It seems you weren't bluffing after all. This could be kind of fun. Explaining the Super Saiyan 3 transformation to himself, Trunks thinks that releasing large amounts of ki is the method to make Super Saiyan 3 possible. During the past several months of training, he's raised his basic power and finally acquired the strength to go Super Saiyan 3. But also, he hasn't had the opportunity to train with the form to maintain it, so he won't be able to do this for long. The window for victory is shallow. Well then, let us begin! While Trunks works on his comeback, things aren't going so well for Oob. How absurd! And while that's technically the end of Chapter 8, while young Gigi was writing this, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods was released, so he wanted to do something small to kind of fix his own canon with the Pilaf Gang. Many years after the death of Majin Buu, the Pilaf Gang finally collect the coveted Dragon Balls. Mai congratulates her leader, saying, Well done, Pilaf-sama. The moment your dream will be fulfilled is finally at hand. And yes! Furthering, well, hurry up and make the wish before anyone interferes. Wish for world domination. Well, state your wish. Hmm. Uh, all right. Very well. C could you make us just a bit younger? Much to the frustration of the rest of the Pilaf team. No sweat. And with that, the Pilaf gang turn into their younger selves. My scolds them, saying, Pilaf, why didn't you wish for world domination? Sh shut up! Wouldn't it be lame to be a king at my age? I can wish for world domination next time, after we gather the Dragon Balls again. Good grief. Then my shouts, but I can't believe he made us this much younger. We're too young. In this manner, Pilaf and the gang just got a bit younger. Just a bit. After that, Mai became Trunks' girlfriend. But as Trunks wonders what's going on, Mai transforms back into an adult. As Pilaf and Shu transform as well, leaving Trunks royally confused. Not knowing what to say, Mai starts laughing, saying, Actually, I'm an adult! So, so for this reason, forget about me, kid! Now confused and frustrated, Trunks starts to tear up. Somewhat bothered by this herself, she says farewell and jumps from the tree. Then telling Pilaf and the others, let's run away! Because of the way he said, just a bit, Pilaf and the gang were temporarily rejuvenated. And in this way, they returned to their original forms. Afterward, they continued their journey in the pursuit of the Dragon Balls. After personally bearing witness to the greater than expected power of the evil dragon, Trunks transformed into Super Saiyan 3 as a last resort. The dragon is obviously shocked by this newfound power. <sighs> What's with this guy? Not only did his appearance change, but also his power and speed. What, what the hell is he? Though we may have the upper hand for now, it's obvious Trunks is losing stamina fast. But he tells himself as long as he can maintain the Super Saiyan 3 form, he has a good chance to win this fight. Before reminding himself yet again, his opportunity is limited. Alright! <laughs> Eat this! With the intensity of the attack, Trunks realizes his power is plummeting before outright dropping out of the Super Saiyan 3 form, immediately realizing the danger he's now in. Trunks drops to the ground, pleading with himself for it to be over. But as the dust clears, the dragon emerges from the carnage. How dare you? You've really done it this time. This isn't good. Huh? You went back to normal. It seems that transformation was limited. Your power has dropped substantially. The dragon then declares Trunks is nothing in his current state, and the battle is over. Ha <laughs> ha! 
As it's quickly confirmed that Trunks doesn't stand a chance without Super Saiyan 3, the dragon says, Let me give you a word of praise before I finish you off. That power was magnificent. If you had been able to keep fighting like that, I wouldn't have stood a chance. Now out of respect, I'll finish you now so you don't suffer. Farewell. Just then, Goten comes out of nowhere and sends the dragon flying. Sensing his distress, Kabuto Kai transported him there to help out. Facetiously, Goten asks if he arrived too soon. While immensely happy to see him, he has his pride to protect still, so he tells Goten way too soon, before Goten quips back. After this, you better give me a raise, boss. I'm gonna be a dad soon, so I need the money. But while they're talking, the dragon snaps back into action. Ugh, I won't forgive a surprise attack. While he and Goten stare each other down, he tells Trunks, now that that's settled, let's end this quickly. Right. And with the joint efforts of Trunks and Goten, they're able to recover the two-star ball. Now that things have calmed down, Goten jokes, but why did you have so much trouble with a guy like that? Z shut up! We were only able to beat him so easily because I weakened him. But to be honest, you did kind of save me. We then join Oob once again, who's still struggling with his evil dragon. Ugh, he's strong. <laughs> Telling the dragon that he was caught off guard because of the gap between how he looks and how strong he is, but that won't happen next time. Huh? As Oob goes to launch an attack, he abruptly stops for some reason. <laughs> what? Getting knocked to the ground yet again, Oob picks himself up. He thinks to himself how this whole situation is just odd. The key he senses from this guy isn't supposed to be very strong. But why are his attacks doing next to nothing in damage? While continuing to laugh his derfy laugh, Oob grows ever concerned. Finally, the dragon says, You have such a puzzled look on your face. Do you want me to tell you why your attacks aren't working on me? He then explains that due to the tremendous negative energy coming out of his body, the power of all positive energy is rendered completely ineffective in a 5 meter radius, essentially acting as a shield around him. And that's why those with a strong sense of justice have a very bad chance against him. Putting it in other words, Oob says, So you're saying my key is being erased before it even reaches you? To which the dragon confirms, So you understand? There's absolutely no way you could beat me. Ugh. So hurry and send me back to the earth. But Oob still vows that there's no way that's going to happen. Goku and the others, himself and the others, they're protecting the earth with their own hands. But the dragon just warns, no matter how many times you try, the result is going to be the same. Charging an immense ball of negative energy, the dragon says that people like you who possess the power of justice will undoubtedly die if they eat this. So you end here, human. As the negative energy begins to consume Oob, he finds himself in a sort of limbo, wondering what's happened to him. Is he dead? Where am I? What was I doing? None of it even matters anymore. This sensation is very dark and hateful, but somehow familiar. I felt this somewhere before. It's very nostalgic. I want to destroy. I want to feel rage. I won't forgive. I am a Majin. And with the negative energy, Oob has reverted back to his Majin form. Sensing it, Kabuto Kai notes that this key is tremendously evil, wondering if it could even be Oob. He just tells himself that this is not good and he must hurry ahead. Even Goten points out that this key feels very familiar, and Trunks shouts that he's confident that this is Majin Buu's key. But what could this possibly mean? But Gohan has a slightly different variation on what he senses, saying he feels a mix of both Oob and Buu, and Oob's key has grown several times stronger than before. But what could have happened to him? Uh, this is ridiculous. I'm sure your key should have vanished. But not only, your key resembles our key. As the dragon lies in confusion, Uba's has done enough sitting around. While his energy terrifies the dragon, Oob finally speaks up. I'm going to kill you, scum! I won't forgive you! While focusing on this, something else gets both Vegeta and Gohan's attention. With Vegeta saying, It's about damn time you showed up! As Gohan just stares on at his adversary. 
Gohan and Vegeta's battles are finally about to begin. But what's become of Oob? As Oob's newfound Majin Ki envelops him, Old Kai looks on from afar, even noting to himself that he's been completely overtaken by Evil Ki. The shapeshifter Sagoro asks what that even means. Hmm, how should I explain it? Old Kai says that after being taken in by the negative energy, the Majin Ki that was lying dormant within Oob was released. Now, Oob has completely lost his spirit of justice and become a Majin. And unless he reclaims his old spirit somehow, Oob may end up turning violent like the evil dragons. As if this current transformation is drawn out for too long, he'll be unable to return to normal. As it becomes more and more apparent that he's lost control of the situation, the evil dragon thinks that he must use his most powerful technique. He realizes his ultimate attack is being pushed back. There's nothing the Shadow Dragon can do and he is vaporized. Even though the battle is won, Oob is yet to regain control over himself as he continues to let out enormous amounts of ki. Old Kai knows that they must do something to help him regain control over his former self. Stating the obvious, Sagoro points out that there's a need to convert negative energy into positive energy, which gives Old Kai an idea. He quickly contacts Kubito Kai, telling him there's something he urgently needs him to bring. You want me to bring something? Telling them, they keep it a secret from the audience. I see. I'll take care of it. While Oob continues to go mad, memories from Majin Buu are brought back, including when B and Mr. Satan nearly died. While trying to get his emotions under control, the anger scrapes at the inside of his head. When Kabito Kai teleports to his location, holding the Ultra Divine Water, he splashes it on him. Slowly but surely, it seems to bring him back to his senses. As he manages to mutter, Kaioshin sama? Happy to see him back to his regular self, Oob apologizes to him for all the trouble. Regardless, they're just happy they were able to recover their third Dragon Ball. The others also see this from Otherworld. Simultaneously, in a distant land where Vegeta is, his Shadow Dragon makes her appearance. Asking the prince, Hey you, what world is this place? Who responds with, You're gonna die now so it doesn't matter what this place is. Though Vegeta does have a question of his own, asking which wish was she born of. While naturally hesitant to the one who's promising to end her life, she tells him that she was born when the wish to remove the bombs from the bodies of Android 17 and 18 was granted. Having satisfied his curiosity, Vegeta then says, In that case, I'll finish you in no time, small fry, causing the dragon to equate Vegeta to an undisciplined child, saying he has an awful attitude. But in no mood for an I know you are, but what am I contest, Vegeta powers up. Content with his current level, Vegeta tells her to prepare to die. As the prince gets the upper hand, the dragon tells him not to get carried away. As she's able to make a good hit on Vegeta with what appears to be a wad of hair, she scolds him for scuffing a woman's face, then tells him she's done playing around as Vegeta goads her on. She fires some sort of attack out of her mouth. Dodging and appearing behind her, Vegeta tells her, it appears you have the ability to manipulate a special thread, one that would rival even steel. If I were to be caught by it, it would be rather troublesome, but you're too slow to ever catch me. She commends Vegeta for figuring out her secret, but tells him his confidence betrays him. Vegeta tells her she'd be best to just surrender now and give him the Dragon Ball. Continuing to fight would be a waste of time. This causes her to smile silently to herself before laughing aloud, confusing the prince. Wow, how naive! You still haven't noticed? What? Before saying the words, clear net. Without him even noticing, she's ensnared Vegeta with an invisible thread. Explaining further, she said she's been laying him since the fight even started. Using the visible threads as a guise, she was able to effortlessly lay the invisible ones for a trap. <sighs> And now that Vegeta is completely entangled, she declares her victory and says, Now, it's time for your punishment. But, like with a lot of us, Vegeta merely laughs at the idea, causing the dragon to ask if he's been scared senseless or something. Vegeta responds, 
Fool! You think you've won with something like this? You underestimate me! To which the dragon replies, Hmm, you're just acting tough. I'll show you whether or not it's just acting. While Vegeta powers up, she remains confident that he cannot break through the threads. Going Super Saiyan 3, he snaps right out of him. The dragon can only cower in fear of Vegeta's power. Too bad. Sorry, I'm not a half-assed opponent. While she continues to be frozen in fear, Vegeta says, playtime is over. I'm going to finish you now. Unleashing his final shine attack, he blows the dragon to bits. Back with Gohan, his adversary demands he send him back to his original location. I can't do that. You're going to fight me here. Fight you? I don't know what your objective is, but if you want to die that badly, I'd be happy to oblige. Then of course, Gohan also asks the mandatory question, what wish were you born from? Who without hesitation tells Gohan, when you resurrected the Earthlings after the defeat of Omega Shenron. So, the last wish that was granted. I swear, Earthlings are nothing but fools! I can't believe you summoned us again! Maybe we are fools for repeating the same mistakes, but if that responsibility is ours, we'll surely just defeat you again! The two get into a short back and forth before Gohan finally says, That's enough chatter! I must hurry and defeat you, or my father's life is at risk! Oh! Here goes! He knows he has to hurry and find the Dragon Ball so he can go help the others. But it appears his battle is not won yet. The evil dragon picks her busty self off the ground as Vegeta says, I'm shocked! I can't believe you're even still alive! Catching her breath, she eventually responds, If possible, I didn't want to have to change to this form, but it seems you've left me with no choice. And Vegeta pulls the Vegeta and says, Go ahead, you're totally bluffing! Super Sansin Long finally reveals her true nature. Will Vegeta be able to recover the fourth Dragon Ball? As the Shadow Dragon transforms, Vegeta patiently waits. This is my true form! You've become very ugly! In a mad panic of vanity, the dragon tells Vegeta to shut up and that's why she didn't want to use this form. But since he's seen it, she can't let him live. Hmm. Well, I guess you've grown slightly stronger. I'll kill you! Slightly stronger indeed, but so what? This... this is insane! He's managing to fight while evading all of my nets! Even though they're invisible, he's probably sensing my key flowing through them. He's even avoiding the ones I shoot during battle. He's not all talk after all. After her inner monologue, Vegeta shouts, You may have improved, but it's still not enough for me to even get serious. If that's all you've got, no matter how much you struggle, you can't defeat me. I'll end this now. What? Damn you! As the dragon holds her abdomen, Vegeta says, Didn't I tell you? You're just unlucky it was me who was your opponent! And with that warm-up exercise of a battle, Vegeta collects the three-star ball. You're pretty good. You too. However, now there's no way you can win. What? I'll tell you about my ability. By ingesting an opponent's blood, I learn everything about them, including their memories, power level, weak points, etc. But upon learning of Gohan's intense power, this does nothing to reassure him in this battle. As a matter of fact, this only confirms his worst fears. He cannot win this fight. <laughs> What's wrong? You suddenly just turned blue. Though scared out of his mind, the dragon tries to reassure himself that he knows all of Gohan's attack patterns and weaknesses. Admitting aloud, the dragon says, To be honest, I'm shocked. I had no idea how mismatched our power levels were. But just because you're stronger doesn't mean you'll win the fight. You've got to use your head, you know. Oh yeah? So what are you going to do? <laughs> it, it can't be. In lieu of a traditional transformation, it appears this dragon can shapeshift. And in this instance, 
used his knowledge of Gohan to transform into his daughter. Distraught and irate, he asked the dragon what the hell he thinks he's doing. Who replies, I told you just a moment ago, I know everything about you, including your weak points. My weak points? You think that form is my weak point? Let's try and see. The dragon points out that Gohan's not attacking or countering at all. Gohan tells himself to calm down. Even if it looks like Pan, it's not her on the inside. As this is very reminiscent when Ginyu stole Goku's body, maybe that experience is helping Gohan. As he finally manages to throw a punch, the dragon doesn't at all seem deterred. Laughing as he stands back up, he says, It's just as I thought. That attack wasn't serious. You really feel guilty about your daughter, don't you? <clears throat> Like I said, I know everything about you, including what it takes to beat you in a fight. Then, just to add insult to injury, the dragon begins to act out actual memories Pan and Gohan shared, even imitating her voice much better than I ever could. Papa, listen! Roll spilled coffee on my clothes I lent her! Oh yeah, I found a necktie that seemed like it would look good on you, so I bought it! Catching his attention, this quickly begins to make Gohan furious. As this appears to do more damage to him than the battle itself, Gohan is brought to tears before he drops to his knees. Commenting on how Gohan's lost the will to fight, the dragon furthers by saying, Well, that makes sense. Rationally, there's no way you could kill your daughter twice. Now, let's settle this once and for all. As the dragon is able to pin Gohan to the ground, he says, I swear, the way you humans think is so incomprehensible. Love, bonds, they're good for nothing. Why throw your life away for someone else? as Gohan still appears to be paralyzed by the situation. That's why you always have to rely on the Dragon Balls. Learn from your own damn mistakes already! Then continuing to stomp on him, he asks how it feels to be pummeled by your own beloved daughter. Playing with you is fun, but I'm already getting bored of it, so I'll finish you off! As Gohan lies motionless, the dragon turns back into his regular self. Tornado Ball! Die! What? Going Super Saiyan 4, Gohan's able to deflect the attack. R ridiculous! I attacked with everything I had! As Gohan lunges for him, the dragon begs him to wait, but he does no such thing. While the dragon bleeds out, Gohan tells him that he realized in the middle of the fight that he would definitely revert to his original form again. Asking how he knew, the Super Saiyan 4 then informs him, When you attacked in Pan's form, I realized there was almost no damage. You probably couldn't use your full power while shapeshifted, could ya? So I figured you'd revert back to deliver the finishing blow. <sighs> and you delivered perfectly the moment I was waiting for. It can't be! How dare you toy with Pan's feelings! I'll, I'll show you, you no mercy. mercy! As Gohan powers up a Kamehameha, the dragon knows he's finished. Begging him to wait once more, Gohan launches the attack! As the emotional battle comes to a close, Gohan collects the seven star ball saying aloud to his daughter, Pan, it'll take just a bit longer. Papa is definitely gonna revive you. Elsewhere, our otherworldly friends talk about how smooth the process is going. It won't be long before they collect them all. Old Kai steps away from the crystal ball to check in on Goku, who's still soundly asleep. However, Old Kai does note that his condition has improved. With five parts of the negative energy having been purified, the burden on Goku's body has decreased. Old Kai can only hope all is going well for the remaining two. We're counting on you, Vegeta and Gohan! As Kabuto Kai searches the earth for one of the remaining shadow dragons, he finally finds him. Hero, danger! Danger! Scary! Dangerous! It's him. What an absurdly enormous key! He's obviously on a whole different level than all the other dragons that came before. Well, well, if it isn't Kaioshin-sama, you're late. I got sick and tired of waiting, so I've been researching cool poses. You've come to seal our movement, right? What a smartass. There's no opening to approach. Now, please just hurry up and send me where the others are waiting. What? what? Did you just Did say to take you there? there? What do you what mean? mean? Is it Is your objective, objective to torment, torment the people, people of Earth? Earth? <laughs> that certainly might be true of the other dragons. But I much prefer breaking the noses of the strong over tormenting the weak. I know you've been fighting on other planets to shield the Earth. Well, then how convenient Danger. for me. Danger. But before that, let me ask you one thing. What wish were you born of? <laughs> I was born when the wish teach me how to transform into Super Saiyan God was granted. During that battle with Beerus-sama. Okay, I'll take you where Gohan is waiting. Gohan, it's up to you. Huh? Huh? 
<laughs> what magnificent power! Very well, I'll uh, take my leave. Oh, please wait, Kaioshin Sama! Yes? It's the fifth Dragon Ball. Please keep it safe. I understand. Give it all you've got, Gohan. So, you're my opponent. I'm not all that strong, but please let me challenge you in battle. Hmm. No, this guy is very strong. Okay, very well. Let's hurry up and begin. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. Super Yi Shenlong has a sort of weird personality, but could his actual power be as dreadful as Gohan and Kabutokai fear? Gohan had barely managed to defeat Super Ki Zing Long, and now Super Yi Zing Long has appeared before him. How will Gohan fare against this more powerful adversary? I can already tell this guy is no joke. Little tricks aren't going to work. Oh! Not playing around, Gohan instantly goes Super Saiyan 4. Oh! Commenting on Gohan's increase in power, the Shadow Dragon is looking even more forward to this fight now. Son Gohan, Vegeta! Before the battle with the evil dragons, there's one important thing I need to talk to you about. Telling him it concerns the Super Saiyan 5 transformation, but he thinks that both of them have already realized it. The burden on the body is too severe, but the burden on the brain is more excessive than anything. So if possible, the two warriors need to win without going Super Saiyan 5. Drawing attention to the obvious, that may be difficult, but either way, the Super Saiyan 5 transformation will only last about 10 minutes anyway. And if they do try to push themselves any further than that 10 minutes, there could be serious repercussions to their minds and bodies. They could even die. Once again, Old Kai warns, use the Super Saiyan 5 transformation as only your ultimate trump card. And if you do have to transform, please be careful not to overdo it. Yes, I understand. So we'll have to take the pacing of the fight into consideration, or we may be done in. Back on Earth, Videl, Chi-Chi, and Bulma sit at a table. Chi-Chi assures Videl that everything will be okay, and tells her that she understands how she feels, but fretting won't help, affirming that Gohan will beat the bad guys in Revive Pan. She thanks Chi-Chi as Bulma starts, muttering about how there's nothing they can do but wait. It's unbearable. Elsewhere, Goten's wife appears to be making dinner, saying aloud, now if only Goten would hurry up and come home. Sneezing, Trunks tells Goten that now's a really bad time to catch a cold. <laughs> it's no good if you do such a large attack. You'll leave yourself all vulnerable and unwittingly tire yourself out. I just felt rushed. Next time it won't go the same way. Please, I just want to enjoy this fight. So don't battle in such a wasteful manner. I don't have time to spare for your amusement. I had forgotten you're not an opponent who can be easily defeated. Thanks for reminding me. Ugh. You mind if we continue then? The dragon commends Gohan on his improved speed and movements, but urges them to try even harder. Don't think you can maintain that composure indefinitely. <laughs> well, I'll just tell you this for now. I'm not even serious yet. I suppose I'm using about 50% of my power. 50%? You're bluffing. <laughs> Very well. I'll show you whether or not I'm lying. What incredible key. Great snake. Left snake! What is this? It doesn't hurt at all. And what's this light? <laughs> what are you laughing about? You didn't do any damage to me at all. Really? Is that so? Huh? What is this? I can't move my left arm. Yeah, it's paralyzed. But don't worry, it'll only last a few minutes. But until then, it'll make it impossible for you to continue evading my attacks. <clears throat> I couldn't predict the movements of that last attack. It's gonna be tough avoiding that technique in this state. All right, well, here it comes. Uh, double snake! Ah, 
my goodness! It seems the game is over. Crap, I can't move my body at all. Now let's see if you can still stand after this. Super Dark Cannon! <laughs> Aw, I think he died. I meant to hold back. Man, how disappointing. I hope the next guy will be more entertaining. As Old Kai continues to watch on, Kabuto Kai, Trunks, and Goten join him. He congratulates the boys on their battle, but right now, all Trunks wants to know is how Gohan and Vegeta are doing. Getting him up to speed, Old Kai tells him that they have both succeeded in recovering a Dragon Ball each, which prompts Kabuto Kai to pull out the ones they've already obtained. Gohan is currently fighting his second evil dragon, Super Yi Zing Long, but he appears to be struggling quite a bit. Having been led to believe Gohan could take on anyone, Trunks can't believe this dragon is that strong. But that's when Old Kai decides to let him know that he has yet to use Super Saiyan 5. When Trunks asks why, he informs the others of the burden to the body and mind it puts on the user. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like he can cut corners to beat this opponent. With that, Trunks wants to rush to go help Gohan, but the Old Kai tells him to wait. Gohan hasn't even gotten serious yet. Also, there's still one evil dragon on the loose, so he needs them on standby just in case. Reassuring them, Gohan will be fine. Let's just trust him for now. After all, he is the son of Goku. With everyone in agreement, Kabuto Kai says he'll go look for the final dragon. Back with Gohan, the half-breed Saiyan picks himself up from the wreckage. Wonderful! You're still alive! I guess I underestimated you! Plenty of fun is still in store! <laughs> Just as you are hiding your true power, I've been holding back myself! Alright then! Please don't hesitate! Come at me with all you've got! Maybe I'll try too! Laugh while you can! As Gohan powers up, the others sit in all of his strength. Thinking of his daughter, his power explodes, transforming him into the Super Saiyan 5. Wonderful! Finally, he decided to get serious. This is beyond imagination! I'm thrilled! Now I'll have to get serious too, or else. Oh! This will be over soon. Brace yourself. As Gohan has finally taken the fight seriously, a battle of unprecedented proportion is about to begin. As Kabuto Kai continues his search, he can sense the immense power of Super Saiyan 5 Gohan, alerting him to the seriousness of his battle. While concerned, he puts his focus back on the task at hand, get the Dragon Balls, save Goku and Pan. The boys look on towards the fight, ready to see what this new form is all about. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe I'll have to get serious after all. This is gonna be fun! Witnessing the mind-breaking speed and power of Super Saiyan 5, the others comment on Gohan's overwhelming ability, already thinking they've won, but Old Kai tells him not to get too excited. The dust clears and just as he fears, the dragon is alive and well. <laughs> that was the best! This is the power I've been waiting for! Hmm. After proving to be a match, he tells Gohan he's finally ready to show his true power as well. What? Then, let this be our final battle! Trunks and Goten cheer on as it appears Gohan has this under control. I'm shocked! I can't believe how powerful you are! It seems that even at my full strength, I am no match for you! Continuing their boyish arrogance, Goten and Trunks declare victory once again, but Old Kai again says the fight is not over. 
prompting Trunks to ask what he means. And the old Kaioshin just says he has a bad feeling about this. Huh? That's when Gohan begins to writhe in pain. The dragon looks on in confusion, as the boys also notice something is wrong. Well, what's happening? Looks like the stress on Gohan's body was too much as he returns to normal. The others begin to panic as they try to think of a plan. There's no way Gohan even stays a chance without Super Saiyan 5. Huh. To think it would end like this. To be honest, I'm disappointed. I wouldn't even mind if you had killed me in your previous form. How lame. But now, you're totally boring without that transformation. I guess I'll just finish you. Gohan calculates that he was only transformed about five minutes, and it was probably the damage he incurred earlier that caused the drop in time. Old Kai comes to the same conclusion. Trunks requests that he take him to Gohan immediately, but the Kaioshin has his reservations about this. Even if they all ganged up on him, it's highly doubtful they'd be able to do anything, telling him they'll be throwing away their lives for nothing. Reasoning, if they do nothing, Gohan's gonna die. Old Kai tells Trunks that the best they can do is have Kabuto Kai teleport Vegeta there to assist which is when he finds the last evil dragon. However, this comes at the worst possible time. As the powerful key catches the prince's attention, he says aloud, It seems the last one has arrived. This time I hope it's a worthy opponent. While this dragon is smaller and even looks older than the rest, we all know how looks can deceive. He asks Vegeta if he's the one who summoned him here, who spits at the realization that his opponent is such an old man. Laughing this off, the Shadow Dragon says he doesn't like such assertion. Getting the question out of the way, this one was born when Goku was restored to life. Using Vegeta logic, he rations that this makes he and Kakarot like brothers. Now, it'll be much easier to beat up a geezer. Don't worry, this will be over soon. Further laughing at Vegeta's impatience, the Dragon says that this will make good practice. Rejoining the others, Old Kai tells Kabuto Kai to hurry up and bring Vegeta to Gohan. In disbelief, he says, What? You've got to be kidding! I just brought the last evil dragon to him! As everyone collectively realizes there's nothing that can be done, Old Kai tells the boys to ready up, as they are Gohan's only hope now. <laughs> uh, father? Father? While incurring the beating of a lifetime, Gohan thinks to himself that when his father would face overwhelmingly powerful enemies, he would never give up. And as a result, he saved the Earth countless times, further wondering what Goku would do in a situation like this, and why he was always able to stand back up and never give in. How can I beat this guy? How can I save Pan and the Earth? Well, I've had enough fun. Time to die. Just then, Gohan begins to laugh. Hmm? What's wrong with you? Gone nuts or something? But quite the opposite. Gohan tells him that he finally understands how his father must have felt several times over. The dragon curiously asks what he's talking about. I understand how to beat you. What? The answer is simple. I just have to risk it all, including my life. Exploding with his remaining energy, Gohan returns to Super Saiyan 5. <laughs> Gohan plows through the evil dragon. As he peacefully returns to his normal state, he lies motionless with a smile on his face. On Earth, Videl can be seen with a stoic look. Getting Chi-Chi's attention, she asks her what's wrong, who says it's nothing, just a bad feeling. Almost tooting her own horn, Chi-Chi assures her that Gohan is the son of Goku, he'll be fine, which Videl goes along with, but obviously can't shake the feeling. The others arrive too late, finding Gohan on the ground. They rush over to him as Kabuto Kai tells the others to give him some space as he tries to revive him. But it's too late. The attack took too much out of him. Gohan has perished. While the others curse their own faults, the One Star Ball appears. And... Well, we're in another mess. With the death of Gohan, we may be doomed in the fight to come. Saguro points out for Old Kai to turn around. Goku is fully awake and alert. Asking if it's really him, Goku apologizes for the wait. But thanks to all of them, he's finally returned. As Old Kai goes to explain the situation, Goku cuts him off saying he's already aware of everything. He heard it all while dreaming, then tells the Kai to leave the rest to him. Gohan lost his life in the battle with the powerful Li Xing Long. And just as everyone prepared for the worst, Goku has finally awakened from his long slumber. Now, having been out of commission for so long, will Goku be able to pull off a miracle once again? During his fight with the evil dragon, prior to transforming, Gohan was certain he had heard his father's voice. Calling out to his son, Goku apologizes for causing so much trouble. But not wanting to hear it, Gohan says he's the one who needs to be apologizing, calling himself useless and the reason Pan died. 
trying to break through to him. Goku tells him that he has a request. The evil power binding him has almost been purified, but not quite to the point he'll be much use in battle. So he needs him to beat this dragon no matter what, assuring his son he believes in him. Gohan tells his father that he's already used up all of his power, but is told that if he gives up now, that'll only create more victims, telling Gohan to remember all the times he could have given up but didn't. Thinking back to previous battles, Goku goes on to tell him that after this one dragon is defeated, they can leave the rest to him. Because of those words from his father, Gohan was able to give it everything he had to defeat Super Yi Zing Long and have peace of mind leaving the rest to Goku. As he passes on, he tells his father to please save Pan and the Earth. <coughs> Awaking from his sleep, Goku tells Old Kai that in his current form, he cannot defeat the remaining dragon in the event Vegeta fails. So, while they wait, he asks the Kaioshin to train him. After firing a powerful blast, Vegeta gloats aloud that the dragon was even weaker than he thought, and what a letdown this whole venture has been. Not yet done, the villain emerges from the debris, seemingly undamaged. With this, the prince admits that he's tougher than expected after all, which causes the dragon to call Vegeta egotistical for believing the fight was over, then telling him that he doesn't seem to understand that the outward appearance of strength doesn't reflect the presence of it. Asking him to elaborate further, he then tells him, it's simple. I'm overwhelmingly more powerful than you. Vegeta tries to call him on this bluff. The others arrive back with Gohan all shocked and elated to find Goku standing, actually in tears at the sight of this. Saguro tells him to keep their voices down, as Goku is in the middle of training to fight the final Shadow Dragon. Kibitokai asks what he's talking about. Having taken control of the fight, the aforementioned dragon throws Vegeta's words back at him, claiming he's the one that's the letdown. But with one final trump card, Vegeta uses this moment to break out Super Saiyan 5 telling the dragon that he got carried away, but now he's going to crush him. Surprised Vegeta was holding back this much strength, he tells the prince that now this could get fun. Firing away his final shine attack, the blast makes contact but doesn't seem to even leave a dent. With that same stupid smile, he admits to Vegeta that he may have to get a little more serious. But Vegeta doesn't seem to be handling things as well, thinking that he may have taken on more damage than previously thought, hinting that he's having trouble maintaining his current form. Powering up with something he calls the Dragon Jacket Technique, Vegeta pokes fun at the name before resuming the fight. Coming to yet another standstill, Vegeta vows to finish this battle all at once, which appears to be just the thing the dragon was looking for, as both fire off simultaneously. Vegeta puts his all into the attack. The dragon is taken over by the key as it explodes. As debris and rubble scatter the area, Vegeta holds his head in pain, falling back to his base form. He stares into the void as he spots a figure through the cloud, as all the Saiyan can do is laugh at the predicament he's in. The dragon says it looks like this is the end, commending Vegeta on his abilities, promising to grant him a quick death. But not willing to give in, Vegeta tells him not to be so sure. While resilient, Vegeta simply lacks the strength to continue, falling from Super Saiyan once more. The dragon goes to finish him off, as he charges the last attack, Vegeta can only call himself pathetic that he would suffer such an unseemly defeat, commenting on how it seems he couldn't protect the Earth as Goku did, before apologizing to Gohan, Pan, and Goku himself. 
who arrives just in time at a Super Saiyan 4 state. The dragon demands to know who this new fighter is, as Goku stands ready for battle. Joking, Vegeta tells him that he sure kept him waiting long enough, who cheekily apologizes for his tardiness. With Goku having finally arrived, all we can do is wonder what his training entailed. Will he be strong enough to defeat Super Su Shenron? The final battle is about to begin. A stare down ensues as Goku joins the fray. Hesitating, the dragon asks if he is Son Goku, who has no problem confirming that he is. Having heard this, he tells Goku that he sure did take a sweet time getting here. Also, he's been a pain for the dragons for a good while now. Goku tells him that before they fight, there's something he wants to say. Up until now, they've been really reliant on the Dragon Balls. They've resorted to using them again and again. From King Piccolo wishing for his youth back, to the secrets of the Super Saiyan God, and many others. To which Goku assures that he is grateful for the good the Dragon Balls have done, but he also understands that they need to protect the Earth on their own. So he's ready to settle this right now. Super Su Shenron tells Goku he can puff out his chest all he wants, but he doubts his ability to prove any match for himself. The others look on as the final battle resumes. While he mends, Goku's Kamehameha misses, prompting the dragon to ask if he pulled it intentionally. Just as confused, Goku is seen looking at his hands, before admitting that he's a bit rusty having been out for so long. But the next one will be right on target. Witnessing the fight, Vegeta's left wondering what's going on. Even though he missed, it's still apparent something insane is going on with Goku's power. Even though he's only in the Super Saiyan 4 state, he's much stronger than he's letting on. It's incomparable to the first battle with the Shadow Dragons. Shouting out, Goku asks if he wants to get serious now, who says that he plans to warm up gradually. Getting excited, Goku's ready to start again. Goku's speed and power leaves everyone awe-stricken, even the dragon himself. He congratulates the Saiyan, saying that was much better than before. Goku asks again if he's ready to get serious. In a daze, Vegeta thinks he understands what's going on, but still can't make heads or tails on what Goku's thinking himself. Two hours ago, upon Goku requesting Old Kai to train him, Old Kai asks him specifically what kind of training he's looking for, which is of course the Super Saiyan 5 training Vegeta and Gohan went through. The Kaioshin lets him know that he's worried that not even Super Saiyan 5 will be enough to defeat this last dragon. Goku agrees, revealing his plan to surpass Super Saiyan 5. Inquiring to Goku's ambitions, he says that while sensing everybody's fights, he thinks he discovered something about the secret to Saiyan transformation, as there's something in common with every time they've transformed and surpassed their limits. Asking what that is, Goku explains that the trick to the first Super Saiyan form was rage. Same with Super Saiyan 2. However, 3 was that of pleasure, and 4 sorrow. In other words, Saiyans are able to break through their limits due to emotional distress. Then telling the Kaioshin that his emotional control training is crucial. Goku plans to draw out his power by controlling all of these emotions. By dispersing the elevated emotions, he believes he can eliminate the demerit of the transformational time limit. By releasing the four emotions gradually, Joy being the new addition, he should be able to increase his fighting power far greater than Gohan and Vegeta, thus achieving strength greater than Super Saiyan 5. Back on the battleground, the dragon agrees to finally reveal his true power, much to Goku's excitement. The sheer power knocks Goku back, but he couldn't be happier. Shouting Dragon Jack at max power, he's ready to resume where they left off. As Goku disappears in the crater, Vegeta can only stare on in disbelief, as this attack did nothing, not even scratch Goku. Having never thought he'd find somebody so tough, the dragon tells Goku to amuse him some more. Alas, Goku admits that in this form, he'll only continue to be a waste of time. Catching his attention, Goku begins to power up, confirming Vegeta's beliefs. Figuring out the trick to Super Saiyan 5 faster than anyone, Goku stands ready to end this. Speechless at first, Goku's power is far greater than Vegeta imagined, proclaiming Kakarot has won.
while Goku takes the upper hand, Trunks says he'd expect nothing less from him. As things settle back at the fight, the dragon picks himself up, even letting the situation infuriate him, cursing the Saiyan as he takes to the sky. Just like many before him, he charges up a powerful key attack, firing it down at the planet. Vegeta begins to worry, but Goku stands unbothered, shouting out. It appears Goku takes the blast head on, neutralizing the energy. As his anger turns to fear, the dragon knows there isn't much he can do as Goku begins a Kamehameha. The Shadow Dragon is ensnared by the attack. As the massive key disappears into the sky, Vegeta wonders if he's done it. The others, however, begin their celebration. But Goku isn't fooled, thinking, this can't be, when the dragon appears in another world. It was believed that Super Su Shenron had been defeated by a single attack from Goku, but is alive and well. Furthermore, he's even become able to teleport thanks to the observation of Kibitokai using the technique. What could his goal possibly be after appearing before Trunks and the others? After being driven into a corner, Super Su Shenron appeared in front of Old Kai and the others. What could his plan possibly be? Powering up, Oob, Goten, and Trunks brace themselves, but the dragon says he has no intentions of fighting any of them. What? Of course, his intentions were to only steal the Dragon Balls, thus gaining their power. Everything happens so fast there's nothing anyone could do to stop him as Super Su Shenron begins to transform. Keen on his plan, Goku and Vegeta arrive while this is happening, but it's too late to stop him. While very similar in appearance, Super Su Shenron now looks taller and younger, but Goku states his power is much higher than before. Vegeta yells to everyone that they're in the way and need to get out of here. In a rare moment of humility, Vegeta is also referring to himself. Everyone clears out as the dragon regains his confidence. Once again, the battle is left in Goku's hands alone. Now for the final round. You got me pretty bad before, but listen up. I'm going to put you through 10 times the anguish I suffered through. Brace yourself. No, I'm definitely gonna crush you. <laughs> Bring it. Getting away to safety, Seguro and the Kais watch the fight on the crystal ball, while the fighters look on from afar. In the midst of all the chaos, it appears Kibito Kai at least managed to heal Vegeta's injuries, as pointed out by the author, who thinks to himself, We're well, counting on you, Kakarot. The fate of the universe is resting on you. With a smug smile having dodged the last attack, Goku asks if that's all he's got. Frustrated, the dragon tells him to relax. That was only a little warm up, which comes to a relief to Goku. Watching these behemoths power up, Trunks says aloud that none of them could even hold a candle to these guys. Commenting on the fierce battle, Old Kai worries that the planet will be destroyed at this rate. Echoing his son's comments from moments ago, Vegeta trembles at the power being produced. As Goku's victory looks more and more likely, Vegeta says the difference maker is the hidden potential between the two. From a distance, the dragon shouts to Goku that he never expected him to reach such heights. Returning the compliment, Goku asks if he also feels the thrill of a good fight, but the dragon could care less, even calling Goku a meathead. I'll wipe that stupid look off your face soon enough! <laughs> Goku notices a sharp increase in Su Shenron's ki, knowing he must be up to something, but then it seems to drop in an instant, leaving Goku a bit confused. Die! Dragon Cannon! Firing away from Goku, Su Shenron targets Trunks. While Goku takes the force of the impact, everyone else remains safe. But it seems the damage done may sway this fight. Kakarot, you! 
<laughs> so, Son Goku, that's your weak point. Stating the obvious, Goku calls the dragon's tactic a dirty trick. All Trunks can do is apologize for getting in the way, as Kabuto Kai wonders how something like this could happen. Old Kai admits that leaving everyone behind was a mistake. Didn't I say I'd make you pay for my suffering? And this is just the beginning! This is nothing! Huh? <laughs> Not one to stand by helplessly, Vegeta gets an idea. They're going to send their key to Goku. This is it, son Goku! Die! Having been quiet for a while, Oob of all fighters jumps in the way. I'm the one you're fighting now! What the hell do you think you're doing? Oob knows that given the power difference, he probably won't even be able to stall him for time. So he decides not even to worry about the consequences. Focusing, he returns again to his Majin form. The others surround Goku, similar but different from the Super Saiyan God ritual to lend their strength. Su Shenron discovers what they're up to. But while dashing after him, Oob appears behind him. While Oob manages to keep the dragon busy, Gohan and Pan appear. As his energy is returned, Goku thanks everyone for saving him. Goku has obtained the ultimate power by absorbing the Saiyan strength from everyone. Ugh. Super, Super Su Shenron. Shenron! Reiterating, Goku tells the dragon that he promised the real Shenron that they would learn to protect the planet by themselves. So this next attack will be the final blow. We're really grateful for the Dragon Balls, and I'm sure we'll have to rely on them yet again. But we are the cause of the Minus Energy, so we will be the ones to get rid of it! Powering one last Kamehameha, the dragon is vaporized. The boys break out into a justified celebration, as Vegeta and Goku eye each other in mutual respect. Kabuto Kai brings U back to his senses, and even Old Kai says their heroics give him chills every time. Obtaining the now purified Dragon Balls, the gang has one last wish they need to make. Goku again apologizes for causing so much trouble, but tells the others to head to Bulma's place so they can summon Shenron. Trunks pointing out that's where Pan is being preserved. With Kabito Kai doing the honors, they're instantly teleported to Capsule Core. Everyone ready, Goku calls forth Shenron. Telling the familiar dragon long time no see, Goku explains that their incompetence has caused him nothing but hardship. Son Goku. You did well to defeat the evil dragons, and with your own power as promised. Because of that power, that sentiment, I'm sure we'll be just fine from here on. Now that all the evil energy has been purified, what wish could you possibly want granted? Looking a bit disappointed in himself, Goku again says he's sorry for having to rely on him until the very end, but there is one last thing they need him to do. As their final wish, Pan, Gohan, and every good person killed in this fight, please resurrect them. Understood. Emerging from the preservation chambers, Gohan and Pan wake up. Spotting her grandfather, Pan is brought to tears as she runs over to him. Welcoming him back, Goku assures his granddaughter he's finally home. With the Dragon Balls returned to normal, the curtain has closed on Goku and the gang's long, long fight. But at the same time, the Dragon World doesn't end, but continues endlessly, as long as Son Goku and his friends are there. And that was Young Gigi's Dragon Ball AF. Don't forget to check him out using the links in the description and stick around for the bonus scene after this little post video. Just to clarify and to cover my own nose, it's never explicitly stated that Goku goes through the Super Saiyan God ritual there at the end, even though it really kind of seems like it. Maybe the translator misinterpreted it, maybe Young Gigi wanted to keep it ambiguous, but I just wanted to say for my own sake, my version that I read never says that is the case. It never says that it is not the case, but it doesn't say that it is either. I personally like it either way. Obviously, Young Gigi began the story before the new run of the Dragon Ball series and before the Battle of Gods and all of that. I think Battle of Gods actually came out when he was about halfway through it, so he tried to change a few things to accommodate, but ultimately this was his story, not Toriyama's. So let's cut him just a little bit of slack for having to adjust midway through. 
While I greatly enjoyed it overall, I do have my gripes here and there. Personally, I'm not a fan of the whole revisiting the Shadow Dragons for the final enemy thing. I really thought there were going to be a mini boss preparing for the actual final boss, and the way they have members of Frieza's race power determined is a little lame too, where they are just frozen after they're born and their power is higher the longer they're frozen for. I've never been a fan of that concept. And my third criticism is how the manga eventually became yet another wait for Goku battle, in the same vein as the fight against Snap and Vegeta, the Ginyu Force, Frieza, the androids, and so on. But even that's a double-edged sword because it gave the others a lot of screen time to get some action and some character development which I really loved. Now, I did like the idea to introduce another member of Frieza's race. This is, of course, before Frost and all of the new stuff in Super. I like the demons, because I've always said Dragon Ball needs to explore the demon realm more. In the way What's-His-Name took pleasure in the Sounds of Destruction, which is super anime. In the Shadow Dragons, I would have liked if they were a mini-boss, like I said, but making them the main villains really felt like a rehash of GT. I really enjoyed seeing Pan do her thing again. While it was a great plot device having her killed, it was a little disappointing as well because I wanted to see her do a little more. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and as promised, here's that final bonus scene, titled Special One-Shot, Battle of Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. Goku, now in his normal body, is seen in the gi he used while training with Whis. Same with Vegeta. In the world of the Kais, Goku wants to see how much Vegeta has improved, who tells Goku to bring it on. Old Kai and Kabuto Kai are seen watching in, with Old Kai cursing the fact they've gotten dragged into this hobby of theirs. Kabuto Kai points out that the Earth probably wouldn't be able to handle their combined strength, so maybe it's best they do their battle here. Complimenting Vegeta, Goku tells his rival he's getting excited, but as usual, his upbeat attitude disgusts the prince. As their fight abruptly comes to an end, Old Kai complains that the repairs to the planet are gonna be a real pain. Laughing, Goku says this time he only won by a little bit, but Vegeta naturally feels otherwise, saying he's the one who surrendered first. Arguing that the planet would have been destroyed if they kept going, Vegeta doesn't want any of his excuses. If they had kept going, he definitely would have won. Good grief, both of you. Instead of working tedious jobs, Goku and Vegeta exert themselves in training day after day, and their fight will never end.